Good morning. Here I am uh, in my studio in Princeton, and uh, each morning I come in and I start by uh, reading one of the Psalms that I've been working on. Uh, right now I'm in uh, a collaboration project uh, with Dr. Adam Davis of uh, Duke University, uh, who is a theologian and she has been helping me to get through each of the Psalms one per month, uh, slowly meditating on them. And um, I have been working on the panels uh, behind me, uh, which is uh, 48 by 48 panels uh, to um, paint one painting per month. And I started this uh, a year and a half ago and I realized it's going to uh, take me quite a long time, uh, something like 14 years um, to complete. But here I am, um, I'm continuing that journey and uh, this year uh, Duke uh, Chapel gathers people and we're not sure if we can gather so uh, we're still going to have a re remote conference which I want to invite you all to and um, it's on the theme of lament obviously from what is happening in the world today uh, but this theme was decided before the COVID-19 crisis and uh, somehow it, it fell into uh, such a time as this. So we decided to focus uh, instead of doing several psalms as we had originally planned we decided to focus on two psalms Psalm 22 and Psalm 23 and I have been coming into the studio uh, thinking about two of these psalms, so uh, both of them together, and it, it made more sense to me now uh, that I think about th these two psalms together, that these Psalm 22 and Psalm 23 can be considered uh, uh, to be part of an, a bigger uh, puzzle of how the Songs of David, what's known as Songs of David, has been gathered together to help pilgrimages of journey of faith as a theme of lament. Now, Psalm 23 is the famous psalm, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And uh, we, we may have memorized that uh, uh, way back in Sunday school. <clears throat> but at the same time, it is very interesting and very clear to me now that uh, Psalm 22 and 23 can be thought of it together and Psalm 22 is also well known but not as a psalm perhaps but as a crying out of Jesus on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This famous cry that Jesus uttered uh, to God the Father this utter abandonment that he felt. Um, uh, he, he, he felt exile from the very bosom of love that he has brought into this earth with, uh, that this was a man without sin who had the innocence and the connection with God the Father, the Creator. And 
as we go through traumas and crisis of our lives, I, we may have similar uh, expressions in, in our days, and we may consider them to be uh, genuine expressions of our lives. As we are reminded each day of death and sickness, weakness, uh, anger, betrayal, we feel, we feel abandoned by God. And here David's psalm announces this as a proclamation for us to consider in a most brutally honest way. And why could that be connected with Psalm 23, which is the most pastoral um, Psalm, the, the, the most peaceful image come to mind, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The first thing I noticed about Psalm 22, it's that it's a very long Psalm. Uh, it's a Psalm that um, Jesus' disciples would have known by heart. Uh, these Psalms are considered to be sacred texts and uh, they, they, they would have at least have, if not memorized them, they would have uh, this deep intimacy with them. And when Jesus cried out on the cross, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Disciples would have known that is a kind of a trigger, a trigger to think through what the Psalm goes through in its entirety. And I, I hope to share that with you um, as I move forward. But this image of being forsaken uh, gets mixed in. It, it starts with that, but it gets mixed in with God's place in, um, in, enthroned in, in the heavenlies. And, and David admits that this is, um, he finds no rest. In, in even knowing that, but he kind of preaches it to his heart throughout the psalm. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises, he, he writes. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. And he goes on in his description of this despair, uh, anguish. And yet this praise, this, this psalm ends up in the praise, um, which is very important. That while Jesus is crying out on the cross in anguish, he is feeding into praise. A kind of praise that perhaps only those who have suffered, those who have gone through the darkness, what I call ground zero experiences, could utter in sincerity. Because part of that journey, journey of praise, uh, requires that we go through this dark, death of our anguish. So that leads into Psalm 23, and, and I'm going to share in detail how that um, is uh, done through these psalms, and um, I will be capturing some of my paintings uh, through that. Now, what you saw me do in the beginning is quite appropriate for the psalm. Because this stick is um, called a sumi ink, S-U-M-I uh, ink stick. Uh, this most likely was uh, around uh, post-war Japan. It was created in an uh, ink factory in uh, Kyoto area. This, uh, just like good wine, uh, good sumi ink ages, you know, gets better with age. And when I rub this against the stone, which is also um, something that is um, very special to me because this is a um, Sumi Suzuri 
um, which was an award for uh, my graduate uh, school at Tokyo University of Fine Arts um, winning the top prize. And so this I held on since my student days until now, and I, I, am, con I continue to use it. And this rubbing stone is very important because this is the critical part of making uh, this calligraphy ink, which will be used in my art. And what I only realized until quite recently when I was doing the Ash Wednesday uh, paintings for my church, uh, All Saints Princeton Church has a liturgical installation um, I was privileged to do. And I did the Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, the 40 days before Easter uh, paintings. And uh, some of you may know that on Ash Wednesday, you, you are reminded of your mortality, mortality by uh, getting ashes on your forehead. And I realized as I was working on that, that what I'm using, the material, very material that I'm using uh, is the stick is a compressed ash. Pine soots, uh, if you go to a sumi factory in Kyoto, uh, uh, collected and compressed with Nikawa glue and, and creates this uh, uh, beautiful um, sumi ink. Um, and so literally as I am rubbing this against the stone, I am making it come alive, the ashes that we are reminded of our mortality is being reactivated into what I feel is my act of praise, my act of giving this mortality back to the Creator, which Jesus was doing on the cross. Um, and because of that, the disciples must have realized by faith, even though they could not see it at the time of this anguish, that this is a beginning, not the end.